Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 3 of the 63 RCA black and white TV, KCS 147A chassis. So if you uh, have been watching the previous videos, uh, we replaced the majority of the tubes, which I tested all badly. And then uh, in the last video, we discovered that the horizontal hold control, uh, which was 100, or actually uh, 70K potentiometer, according to the service literature that Shanko found me, thank you for that, so, uh, bad 70K pot. We're probably not going to find a 70K. I have 50Ks, I have 100Ks, so we're going to make something work and see if that potentiometer replacement gives us a stable picture. Uh, you notice the fold over in the center on the last video. People will say, well, that could be short of yoke turns. And yeah, it could be, but I'm more inclined to believe that it's the wrong horizontal frequency too fast or something like that that's causing the fold over. But we will soon find out. So let me get the uh, chassis out again, and then we'll do a little reconnaissance and figure out what's going to be needed to re replace the pot with the ones that I have on hand. So as you can see, the fun part here is finding one with a tiny little shaft. Uh, the shaft length's about an inch. We need to find something that fits on the knobs. I don't think I'm going to find that, so I'm probably going to have to get something and whittle it down to make it work. We checked these other potentiometers and they were all pretty crusty, but they, for the most part, they cleaned up except for the horizontal. And the horizontal is just straight open. And the way they have this configured, they're only using one half of the uh, potentiometer. So, that shouldn't be too hard. I can either use a 50K uh, with a 22K in series with it or just use a uh, 100k and just go with it from there so let's see what i got floating around all right so these are the two things that i have i'm more inclined to use this it's a 50k linear it's got a nice long shaft i can trim down and make work with what i got here and then just add a 20k or something like that on the end of it uh, it may work fine with 50K. I don't know. And then we got this 100K that's got a fluted shaft, or neural shaft, whatever you want to call that. Uh, but it's got a detent in the middle. And this may have a switch built in it for like a tone control. So I need to check that and see if that's true. Let's go ahead and do that. Because if it's got a, a switch in it for like a balance control that zeroes it out, then I can't really use it. And let's see if I can prop this up a little bit because otherwise the glare of the light's gonna be in the way. Let me get some clip leads. And then we'll see if this thing has the detent in it for a switch or not. Because if it's got a, a switch in it that's a no-go, and I'm sure there's some way to discover that from the coding of the part number, but I don't know what that would be. Okay, so here we are at 100K in the detent. And that just stops at the detent there. So we've got all that rotation for nothing. So I can't really use that. That's definitely for a balance control type setup. But if I go and use this one, I must have pulled this from something because it's got solder on it. Wow, that's kind of crappy. Look at that. It only attenuates like 37 ohms. Maybe that's why I got put in the, the parts bin. I'm just going to clean it real quick here and hope that that comes back. We might have a bad test lead here too. Let's make sure that's not the case. So I'm thinking that pot's bad too because look at that. Never goes below 30 ohms. 45. Let's check the other direction. 
This isn't trying to be a full restoration, we're just trying to make this work. Yeah, it still never goes below 20 ohms there. So that pot may be garbage. It's just as I work it, it gets a little better, but not much. Oh, there it's at 192 ohms. That's great. Let's make sure one of these probes isn't bad. This seems awful weird and erratic. There we go. Okay, bad test lead. Let's try it this way. Okay, let's change our range. Yeah, that's okay. Bad test lead. All right, so I think we're just going to use this and then trim it down to make it work. because That seems to be the best alternative to the other control, which isn't going to work at all. All right, so we need to get this out, and I don't have a twist lock tool here. And I'm probably going to knock the camera over because it's not sitting on a mount. It's just resting here against a wire core. Trying to get this out of here without breaking the taps off. I don't know why I'm so concerned about it since it's broken. But that's just me. Move this back here. And that bit of the tab is not going to straighten out for me. Yeah, you're not going to cooperate at all, are you? Screw it. I'm just breaking the tabs off. It's a dead pot. I need to stop caring about dead parts. Come on out. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Only using one half of that. All right, let's get the uh, replacement mounted up in there and see what we got to do. Well, at least it's going to fit in there. I'm going to need to cut down this uh, shaft. But that's not a big deal. Okay. Let's tighten this down. Da, 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 da. There we go. Okay. All right, so it's in there. And I got a mark where I got to cut it. And then I got to mark how much to take off. So just peering down at this here, looks like we're going to want to cut it right about there. Make a nice mark with the Sharpie. And then uh, probably get the vice grips and some uh, thermal compound to act as a heat sink so that it doesn't kill the damn pot. And you all may think I'm crazy for doing this, but I've found that if I alleviate a lot of the heat that's created during the process, that it's less likely to murder the part that I've just installed. So 
So I'm just going to slather this guy up and then slather my vice grips up. Let's just want to apply enough here. Just going to hang loose there. Just like that. Let's put a nice stress on that. Maybe we'll get a box to prop that up here. And so I've got a cardboard box here. And I'm going to prop the uh, vice grips up with. Stick something underneath that. That way we don't have too much going on here. So the vice grips not only take the heat away, but they're also going to stop the pot from wanting to rotate when I grind on it. So let's grab the Dremel and get to work on that. All right, so if you got headphones, now's the time to turn the volume down. So there's the amount that I removed. We come back here. That's warm. I can touch that. That's not too hot. So the, the heat sink did its job. And now I do need to uh, go about shaving this down uh, so that we can get the knob on it. And because this isn't really, I don't have any extensions to run this chassis outside of the cabinet like it is right now. There's not enough length for the CRT. There's not enough length for the yoke. There's not enough length for the high voltage lead. So because I don't have any of that, I can't just test it here outside of the cabinet, which sucks. But uh, that's the reality of it. And so what I'm going to do is try to shave this down after we clean it up of course get all the goop off it and we're gonna try to shave it down so that we can get the knob on it easily and since those knobs are fragile I want to make that size as close to what it's supposed to be as possible and so I'll show a little bit of the process but I'm not gonna it's probably gonna take me a good 15 to 20 minutes and uh, Really, I don't want to eat up the space on the camera when I don't have to. And then once we get it so that a knob will fit it without cracking or breaking or risk of anything like that, we'll put a 22K in series and then we'll wire up the oscillator and put it back in and see if that's actually going to help our situation at all. So let me wipe this off first. And we have our good old shop towels. These are wonderful things. And they're non-abrasive. They don't hurt plastics or glass. They don't scratch things. So I'm really all for the shop towels. That turns nice and smooth. Didn't overheat it. So I'm going to have to go slow on this one because obviously, given the amount of metal that I have to take off of this, that I can't really go continuous duty on it. It'll get too hot. It'll die. I don't can't put the vice grip on it because there won't be any space to work with. So... Basically, what I'm going to do is mimic this, since this is already in a position. And let's see what the rotation is here. So the rotation is this way. It's going to want to turn this down. So these knobs don't have pointers on them, so it probably doesn't really matter what side I do. And I just have to shave down enough to make it uh, work with this knob. So we'll create a flat side first. And let me make a mark at the back so that I know where to stop at. So I'm just going to make a mark here to know where to stop so that we don't go 
too far back and we'll just start grinding away at it so again last chance to turn your volume down Alright, so that's starting to get a little too hot to the touch. I can't really keep my fingers on it. So we're going to pause the camera here, let it cool down, and then uh, we'll get on it a little bit more. Alright, so it's been about a couple minutes. It's cooled down again enough where I can work on it. Again, it's gotten a little toasty, so we're going to wait a little bit. Uh, I've almost got where I wanted to as far as the flat side, and then we'll start working on this to, to size this down so that it's more like one of these smaller ones here. So let's give it some time. All right, so let's get to working on the sides now. And I want to get this shaved down. bit and then we'll get back on this thing but uh, so far it's coming along pretty good okay
Okay. That's looking pretty close right there. Let's grab a knob and see if it fits. Okay, so here's one that does fit. Pretty much just goes on there nice and easy. And let's try our fit. Still a little wide. So let me see if I can trim down the sides here real quick. And then we'll try that again. Okay, so we took a little more off the sides. Let's see how it fits now. And there we go. Fits wonderfully. And so now we can uh, hook this potentiometer up and then we can shove it back in the cabinet and uh, see what else we need to do to it. Now, here, the old one's just a wire wrap. I'm going to carefully unravel this, and I'll just trim off the excess. Oh, that wasn't necessary, was it? So we'll scrape that and tin it up. Now, this one, curiously, they soldered. This one they soldered on here, so we'll just clip that, strip it, and redo it. And then, uh, out of curiosity, we'll take this part apart, and we'll see how it died. Okay, so let's go clippy-clippy. And then we'll go ahead and strip this one back. Probably can't see me doing this, but that's okay. All right, so that's stripped back. And then uh, we'll worry about reattaching the wires and the resistor to it in a moment. But uh, out of curiosity, let's take this apart. And let's see how it died. So, taking a look at this, there's no obvious signs of cracking or death. But obviously when we ohmed it out, it wasn't there anymore. And the stops are gone too, which means somebody forced it. So, let's see if we can pry it open without murdering ourselves. And I apologize for the glare. The new overhead lamp is probably a little excessive for this camera. But everyone was complaining about there not being enough light, so now we have more light. Probably too much. So I'm just prying these tabs up with an X-Acto knife, and then we're going to get a little pair of pliers and finish taking it apart. And let's see if we can find any obvious signs of death, because it just measured open so I assume there's a crack or a break or something the wipers dead okay so let's take it apart and yep I can already see that the center wiper things broken let's pull the shaft out okay so this thing it's obviously pretty trash and there is no carbon left be nice if this thing would focus there we go but we can see where's the carbon there's a little tiny bit of carbon way down here you can see that but it's gone it's just used up and I'm thinking somebody got frustrated with it and turned it past its stop broke the stop because the uh, the element here is okay, like this looks okay. These contacts are okay, but the the carbon <laughs> the carbon's just not there anymore. It's just gone. You'd see a carbon tract here, but there's just this little tiny spot here. That's all that's left. So there's another one that's just 
wore out. It's done. So there you go. Dead potentiometer. Just dead from age. And uh, I'm seeing this more and more. And that's why I'm using this QD cleaner because it doesn't seem to kill the uh, carbon like the deox does. If you hit D these pots with older D5 to clean them, not a good idea. We'll wash the carbon away. You're supposed to use the QD cleaner and a little bit of favor lube, just a little bit. But yeah, so that's that's done. Well, anyway, let's get the new one wired up. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, potentiometer in here we've already validated that the the knob works so now what I need to do is put a 22k resistor in series with it and then we'll wire it up and I have limited mobility with the camera so I apologize for that I'm going to try to show you what I'm doing here I'm going to take this resistor and I'm going to wrap it around the exposed wire on the lead that I cut off and stripped of the old potentiometer and this is just providing a better mechanical connection and then we'll solder the end of that resistor that I just attached to this thing here to the potentiometer and of course cut off the excess and I'm all working from a tiny table I'm not uh, using my full bench today because there's other projects that have to go on that bench that I can't tie this, I can't tie the bench up with this one. So I'm waiting for the soldering gun to get a little toasty. And then we can solder this guy in. Which you probably can't see on camera, so I apologize for that. Okay. And so that's in there. You can see that this little bit here is now soldered on. I'm going to cut off the excess. Do a little scrapey scrapey on this existing lead that was part of the wire wrap. And then we'll cut off the excess of this resistor and then solder the resistor in. Now we're going to go to the same positions that it was in the old setup. And I'm just going to make a little hook with the resistor so that it hooks down and goes into the hole on the potentiometer because again it's good to have a nice strong mechanical connection. I'll even fold it over with the soldering gun. And then we'll Finalize the solder, and then we'll do the same with this one. Now again, I have no idea if this is actually going to fix the problem or not. I just know that that old potentiometer was defective, and since that has to do with the oscillator circuit, I think there's a fair chance this thing will start working again once we get the horizontal oscillator to function. So, yeah, I'm just going to set this at midpoint, really. Along with our, uh, well, we had to have the brightness cranked up all the way the last time. But anyways, this is wired in here now. Let's go ahead and put the chassis back in the cabinet. All right, so the chassis is in. Let's see if it uh, flies or fries. Anybody? No red plate. Oh, we got same crappy response. Yeah, 
And we got, uh, at least it's adjustable. <laughs> but you can see the, uh, the overlap here. So we're still not in a good place yet. And I'm not sure what's going on here. We need to do some heavy troubleshooting of the uh, horizontal oscillator. Because we've got like nothing going on here. We definitely need to check our B voltages too because not a loose connection. And as we increase the speed, we lower the speed, we lose our scan. We increase the speed, we get more scan, we get more brightness. So something definitely in the uh, horizontal oscillator drive circuit. So uh, we need to get a schematic and figure out what's going on with this thing. So here's where this comes in. This is the RCA service data for this chassis. And uh, this is the first print. Um, these are the two models it covers. We have the 147A and very useful stuff here like tube placement tells you where everything's supposed to go. All the service adjustments for all the circuits even tells you what's inside of the tuner which is really handy. Uh, there's your UHF setup uh, for your UHF which actually had a 6AF4. It wasn't a new Vista. And then, uh, but they had a new Vista in the uh, VHF tuner, which is kind of weird. And then we've got our full service schematic here. And so here is our horizontal oscillator section. And we have to take a look at what could be the possible cause for failure. So your supply voltages are 270 volts on pin 1 and 145 volts on pin 2. Uh, your horizontal hold controls your cathode voltage, shunted by a 2.2K resistor. Uh, let's see here. Pin 8 at the other cathode goes through the uh, frequency coil and the little transformer. So if we have to say what's going to present poor waveform, uh, it's going to be, well, since we've already replaced the horizontal hold, we in theory should have a cathode voltage there, which we'll have to take measurements. And I'm sorry that I'm jerking this around, but I'm literally just holding it above the paper with two hands. Uh, the 470 picofarad could be leaky. Uh, the B voltage on pit 1 or 6 could be low. I don't think that the death of the dual diode over here is really going to kill the horizontal sweep but I don't know so I think really the first thing to do is check our supply voltages and see what could be going on there because that's those are my thoughts and so just at first glance uh, we've got that 10k charred looking resistor up there those two uh, spray caps which may be leaky I think those are just paper wax or whatever and we'll check the resistive values around here and see if any of that comes up as uh, useful. I've removed tubes and things to make it easier for me to get around. And then we got to ohm out that coil too and make sure that that coil is not open. There's the little dual diode thing and I have some high speed switching diodes to put in there if, if need be. So I'm tempted to uh, pull out the sprig and the good old cap, which are, have a tendency to die. And since they've been behind a heat shield, building up heat all their life, they could be leaky. But let's do the smart thing first. Check any resistors to see if they're off value. Uh, and then we'll maybe power up. I mean, I could do a preemptive and pull them and test them anyway, just to be sure, since we kind of know what's happening already. But definitely want to take some voltage measurements. But... Uh, let me put the camera down for a second check all these surrounding resistors. So we checked five, R532, which is the 47K up here. That's fine. Uh, pretty much everything in this circuit, 531, the 2.2K is there, the 120K 530 is there, 529 is there. 
Uh, all the resistors in this circuit are happy. So everything feeding this tube minus the supply voltage, which we've yet to check, all those resistors are good. Uh, so the next thing is to ohm out this coil here, the sine wave coil, uh, and make sure that we don't have an open sine wave coil, because that would definitely piss things off. So I'm going to check that real quick, and then if that doesn't solve it, <clears throat> if that ohms out okay, then we'll pull the, the uh, couple capacitors here. We've got a 1,000 picofarad. We've got a 0.1... Uh, which is at the output to the drive, although since we have proper bias voltage on the output, or uh, at least we have a minus DC voltage there, I'll check it, but I'm, I'm not thinking that's going to solve it. 0.056 there at the grid of number two, that might be bad. But yeah, got to figure it out. Okay, so measuring between uh, one side here, one winding I've got 85 ohms, and the other winding I've got 40 ohms. Uh, so that's probably okay. Uh, center tap checks out. So the coil's good. I think we're going to start yanking those caps and testing them for leakage and stuff. I'm betting that they're uh, really the culprit here. So here's a primitive little device that I've made that's kind of like a basic leakage tester. It's basically kind of a dim bulb, except at the output I've got a rectifier which is just directly across the AC at the other end of the bulb and it's a 40 watt bulb and this really isn't very accurate it's just gross leakage so basically what I do is I hook up a suspect capacitor and I see if the light bulb illuminates and if so that means that we got DC leakage and it's putting about 168 volts across that capacitor and it's DC and if there's any kind of leakage or current draw this illuminates now, just as an example, I have an old tired filter cap that I know is leaky. This is rated at 200 volts, and if I attach the device to the section I know is leaky, we can see that it illuminates the bulb. Not very bright, but it illuminates it enough to know. Whereas if I go to the other sections that are still good, doesn't light, doesn't light. See a little spark there as it charges, but it doesn't light. When you go to the bad one, oh yeah. So, I was hoping to use this to do a basic test on the capacitors I pulled. And so far, this uh, point 0.1 here that I pulled out is A-OK. -okay. I figured while I yanked it, I'm going to put it not put it back in there just because I have one already pulled out for it. But you see there's no illumination. And even if we get down right in there, there's no illumination. I mean, if I turn the lights out, maybe we'd see something, but it doesn't appear to be. I need to dig out my real cap tester, but this is only a 200 volt cap anyway, so 168 volts out of 200. If it's going to be leaky, we're going to know it. So let's yank the other one. Now, nominally, both of these caps do not check bad for leakage. So what I'm going to do here is I've got one end hooked up to the capacitor. And then the other end, I'm going to hook up to my meter. My meter is a high impedance. And so what we're going to do is measure the voltage through the cap, the DC voltage through the cap. And it should start out high and bleed down to nothing if there's no leakage. So this one's bleeding down. And ignore the minus because I've just got a reverse polarity. It's bipolar cap. doesn't matter. But you can see here it's bleeding down to nothing very slowly so that means there's no DC leakage through that cap even into a high impedance let's do the Sprague thing the Sprague one bleeds down pretty fast I'm gonna change them out just because but nominally it doesn't look like the capacitors are the issue now it could be that at a very high frequency like the horizontal sweep that the capacitor isn't recovering like it's supposed to. Uh, if we switch over here to a my little capacitance meter here. So this 0.01 
still measuring 0.01, 10 nanofarads. And the 0.1 should be 100 nanofarads. So yeah, it's, you know, 6% off, but still well within what it's supposed to be. So I don't think the caps are it. We obviously haven't found any bad resistors out of tolerance. So I'm going to put uh, 0.01 in that circuit again. Look over any last possibilities, but I think really what we need to do is power it up and do some voltage checks and compare with the schematic. Gonna see if it comes up any different. I highly doubt that it will. Because again, there was no signs that our capacitors were defective. And all the resistors were cool, so... Highly doubt that there's gonna be any change. I got nothing on the screen. Did I hook up to CRT? Yes. Should be seeing something. No brightness, no nothing. What did I do? Oh, there we go. So as you can see, we're still mega twitchy here. So... Definitely a frequency-related problem. Let's just take a look real quick and see what our voltages are on the oscillator. All right, so coming back here, this is gonna be the hard part and I may need to put the camera down or get some needle probes too. I think I'm gonna need needle probes cause I can't get these fat probes in here. But anyways, uh, as far as high voltage, I've got 300 B plus. We just need to find out if it's getting here. Let me get some needle probes like the longer this thing is on the dimmer and worse it gets so it kind of makes me wonder I also smell something getting hot so we're gonna turn that off for a little bit while I go fetch my stuff okay so poking around with my smaller probe here I've got some AC there probably our heater I got minus 41 volts that looks about right Yeah, minus 36, 41, okay. Hundred and sixty out of 145, that's pretty high. It's like the tube isn't conducting. Just checking to make sure I still got drive on the screen. Well, that's weird. It's like I got no drive there. 167. Can't see where to get in here. 9 volts. That's our cathode. That's about right. Now, let's see if I can get in here. Without electrocuting myself. What's this test point here? 292 volts. 270, 292. Okay, so that's... Yeah, so 292 on the plate of pin 1, and we got 160 on the plate of pin 6. So this is a little too high. We got minus 41 on pin 7. We should have plus 3 volts on pin 2. Can't really get to it. So, voltages look kind of okay. 9 supposed to be grounded. Da, 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 da. Let's go back to 8. Yeah, 1. 0.05 volts. It's a little high there. So something ain't right. But we do have supply voltages, which is good. 
trying to think of what could affect those two circuits. A sine wave generator. Yeah. Okay, so we could have a funky coil. We could have one of these little wave shaper things. Uh, trying to get to pin two. Pin two should have three volts on it. Trying to reach back here is something nutty. Can't really get to it. Yeah, pin two has nothing. Pin two has nothing. Whereas pin one has our 292. All right, so pin two is supposed to have three volts on it. And that comes from the uh, 560K resistor, which I think was good. Which comes from S. Yeah, don't mind me. And we checked 529. So what's on the other side of 529? Let me just double check. And my sweep's starting to disappear. So something's getting pissed off. 528, 529. Okay, so 529 up here, diddly squat, 529 on the other side, still diddly squat, where does this go up? Okay, so it comes off the center of 528, 527, and now everyone's going to get dizzy. Okay, so there's our three and a half volts there. It's supposed to be three volts. But there's nothing here on the low side of it. Like that's open. But I thought I tested that. I thought 528 seemed okay. But obviously there's, there's no three volts there to bias that grid. And granted three volts is more negative than 10 volts. So, I mean, in theory, it should be running, but it could be in cutoff, too. You just don't know. And the fact that it's not, it's got excess plate voltage on it means that it, it might be in cutoff. And so C521, which is our 470 picofarad, might be leaky. Might be, might be. We'll have to see. Let's get a meter on that. Turn the set off. So if we look at what could be killing that voltage, uh, the C519 which is on the low side of that resistor, could be leaky. C520 could be really leaky, but I don't think it is. And C521 is 470. The interesting is, is we're getting a slightly negative voltage there, rather than a positive voltage. Usually, if there's a short there, it just pulls it down close to zero, whatever it is. But it's usually not negative. And like I said, I thought I tested C or R528 390K for being open. Because here, it shows up as three volts, but on the low side of it, there ain't squat. It's that tiny little, you know, tenth of a volt negative or whatever, so that's what I gotta look at next. So measuring them with a meter, R528, which is supposed to be 390K is 410K, that's not gonna piss off the circuit. The 560K R529 is 572, so again, not going to piss off the circuit. The adjacent one there, the 120K is 122K, so that's probably fine. But since we're dealing with small amounts of current, we have to look at things that are uh, probable influences in pulling that voltage down. Because if it's supposed to be 3 volts and we're getting next to nothing or a negative voltage, then we have to look at what's adjacent. The only things that are really adjacent to those uh, would be C519, which is the 001. That would be an immediate source of pull down if that was leaky. Uh, it could also be that C520 or C521 is messed up, but uh, yeah, C519 is probably the most likely culprit for being leaky. So I suppose we could yank all three and test them and give it a shot. Because it just may be that, that that first section there is in cutoff and not running. And that's why we're not getting enough drive. Because the plate voltages are good. Uh, the grid of pin 7 is a little high at minus 40 volts. It should be minus 36. Um, 0.8 cathode's a little high. It's 0.1. It's supposed to be 0.05. But the, the significant change 
is pin two, which is supposed to have three volts on it, and it's got a tenth of a volt negative. So that makes me wonder uh, if the tube's messed up or if it's one of these caps. The sine wave coil checks out, although I don't know if somebody was tweaking on it. We don't really know that. So that could also be an issue. And the horizontal hold, which is in the circuit of that same one with the lack of voltage on the grid, does have an influence on the circuit, but not very much. And then why is it so twitchy? So I think I'm going to yank these caps in this circuit here and test them and see what's going on with them. And then we'll see if we turn up anything there. But this is kind of a head scratcher. And it could be that the dual diodes at fault it's just not providing enough current but uh, you know it's it's good on the high side of 528 so i i don't think it's the diode thing it might be don't really know yet um yeah so anyways all right so i got c520 pulled out which is that 0.058 56 whatever and it doesn't trigger the light bulb but if I measure the DC voltage through it, it's jumping around. It's taking its sweet time to bleed down. Now for a time, it was not bleeding down. Yeah, maybe that was a false alarm. All right, let's check the little point zero zero one thing. All right, so here's the point zero zero one. That one bleeds down almost immediately too. No, no, it's kind of jerky there. It's not bleeding down. See that? Twitch, twitch, twitch. And of course, now that I say that, it goes back down to zero. Interesting. All right, whatever. Just prove me wrong. All right, let's link out, yank out the 470 picofarad. I'm having trouble finding this silly thing. 522. Looking for 521. 23, 506, 505, let's see, 515, 533, should be a small value cap, 28, come on, yeah, it's frustrating. 521 is supposed to be a 470 picofarad off pin 2. There it is. That little tiny guy tucked up in there. So, let's test him out. Yeah, I don't think that one's messed up either. Not it. Wakey, wakey. Or are you just not going to work now? Well, we got sweet, but ain't good. There's just something going on here. Now, someone pointed out that it might be a bad yoke because of what's going on here. So we just do a little love tap here on the yoke. That doesn't really change anything. But uh, it's just not happy. Let's see if we play play with the uh, sine wave coil. Maybe somebody turned the cores in. Who knows? All right, so we're going to tweak a little bit here. But turning the sine wave coil really doesn't do much. 
Changes a little bit of fold over and stuff. Yeah, but it's not really uh not really doing us much good here. Not good at all. Ugh. Burning death. Alright, so the high voltage fuse popped. And there's a horrific smell coming from the uh, high voltage cage. Uh, this got super hot. I cut the camera off so I could, you know, take a look back here. But uh, there's an immense amount of heat on this cage. So really what I should have been doing is monitoring the uh, horizontal output current, but there was no red plating going on on the tube, so I figured it was A-OK, -okay, but apparently not, because the flyback looked good when I checked the uh, high voltage tube, but uh, something was going on here, and I think this is one that I'm just going to cash it in, just because I've invested a lot of time in it, and it's gone nowhere. Um... My guess is, is that the reason why this was parked was because of the flyback failure that was impending or screwing up or whatever. Um, the yoke, the yoke is ice cold. So it's not like there's a short in the yoke that's, you know, drawing a bunch of current and loading the flyback down. Um, I tried everything in this circuit Looking at the the frequency just with a counter, it was running too slow. It was running at about 11 kilohertz, which really doesn't work. And if you go about lower than that, it just squeals and there's no sweep. Uh, the transformer, this ohmed out. The coil ohmed out on both sections. And adjusting it, as we saw on the camera, barely did a damn thing. Uh, we had insufficient grid drive. On one of this but that was in the feedback through the horizontal detector I replaced the detector diode just on a wind that that might fix it but it really didn't and as I was adjusting things trying to get it uh, the high voltage fuse blew and then I smelled something really nasty so let me just open this up really quick so the donut is really toasty it's blackened uh, this is fresh wet wax here, so something obviously had a, there was a short inside of there. So this really isn't going to go anywhere. I could dig through all my flybacks and find something that might work, but given the, the crusty rust bucket that this is, I think I'm just going to part it out. It's got a nice strong CRT in it I can use for something else. Uh, and then there's all the tubes that I had to throw at it and all the time. So, can't fix them all, folks. Uh, this one just isn't worth the effort. It can be used, uh, parts like the vertical output transformer and stuff will be used for other sets. Power transformer will be used for other sets. But it's just, uh, there's something wrong with that flyback. I don't know what it is, obviously. There's an overload at some point. And uh, that's why I was smelling something hot earlier. That was it. So, sorry, this one didn't get fixed, but uh, interesting lesson in troubleshooting. These things can become money pits real fast, uh, as this one did. So, all these tubes will get reused somewhere else. But, I hope you guys watched, enjoyed watching the journey and the process of getting to where we're getting. I don't have a ringer here, so I can't confirm that this is dead, but... Uh, all the signs point to it being dead. So that's going to be all for this one. We'll move on to another project. But I hope you all enjoyed watching it and uh, more stuff to come.